watching from Minor Memorial United Methodist Church, whether you are watching from DeSoto County or elsewhere in our state, our country, or possibly even somewhere else in the world, we sure welcome you to our worship service today, Sunday, March 29th. My name is Amanda Gordon. I'm the pastor here at Minor Memorial. If we have yet to meet in person, I look forward to the day when our paths may cross, and I'm so thankful that you are joining with us today. Before our service this morning, we had announcements running on Facebook Live, and we will show those announcements again at the end of the service. Right now, we have no in-person activities at the church. We know until at least April 17th, but we do have several online opportunities throughout the week for our children, our youth, and our adults to continue to connect with God and one another. I'm very excited that this week we do have our children's activities lined up for Monday and Thursday, and so we sure hope that everyone will find a way to connect as best as you can. Again, thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you for taking this time to connect with the Lord. It is so fantastic that you are making time to worship God, and I hope that you will experience the presence of the Holy Spirit through our service. I believe that Christ through the Holy Spirit is there with you, and I believe Christ is here with us. So as we begin our time of worship this morning, let us invite the Spirit of Christ to enter into the space where we each find ourselves. In just a few moments, Natalia is going to play our prelude. I'm going to light the Christ candle here in the sanctuary. I invite you to find a candle in your home, if you have one. And as I light the candle here, may you light your candle as a symbolic reminder of the presence of Christ. And after lighting our candles as an Italian place, let us use this time to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Good morning. Let us start off our worship time with some great songs. We have three that we're going to sing. Uh, the first one is Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. This is another one that's a favorite of our Kids for Christ group on Wednesday nights. And then we will sing You Are My All in All. And then we'll end with There's Something About That Name. So please join me in worship, in song. If you know the motions to Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, I invite you to do so. Oh, uh -huh. 
thank you, Alicia, for leading us in those songs that we sure hope brought you more into the spirit of worship. They were, I was, I was feeling it this morning, and I hope that you were as well. As we come to our time for prayer this morning, we do have several prayer requests that have been submitted this week. I remind you that if you have any that you would like to um, include, that you can email me or call the church office during the week. But for our prayer request this morning, um, we do, I think we're trying to pull those up on the screen. They were in the worship order. Yeah, wasn't that different? Yeah, it was, oh. it was in the worship order. You didn't have oh, okay. Um, but we do, as we come to a time of prayer, want to remember um, all those who are working in the healthcare industry, who are serving on the front line, all who have been impacted by COVID-19. Also, have added to our prayer list Mary Massey, who's Anita Geyer's sister, Erlene Linton, Jimmy Linton's mother, Kelsey Gallagher, Debbie Gallagher's daughter, John Williams, Darlene McGee's father, Shirley Kilbury, Julia Cavallo's sister. We send our sympathy to the Lambert family, a friend of Brian Lumpkins, who's passed away suddenly this week. Eugenia Tanner, who's as she's in rehab, and Susan Dunn at rehab. Tom and Patsy Eldred, who are family of Jimmy Linton, who are ill. Jerry McCarson, who we sent out a prayer request as he has fallen and broken his hip, so pray for Jerry. And also all those impacted by the Jonesboro storm and possibly other storm victims. These are all that we've listed. We know there's so much that we can be praying for right now. But we also hope this day is every day that not only do we bring our concerns to the Lord, but we also bring our gratitude, we bring our joy, for the Lord has blessed us in so many ways. So I would invite us now to take a moment of silence to, uh, to share our personal joys and concerns, to, to enter into a time of prayer. Take a moment of silence to lift your personal request, and then I'll lead us in a time of prayer. So let's go to the Lord for prayer today. Almighty and most holy and loving God, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer, we give you thanks for a new day of life. We thank you for the blessing of knowing you, for being able to come together in this way, to worship together. Even though we may not be in the same space, Lord, your spirit connects us. We're thankful that you have brought us through to another Sunday. And for those of us with good health this morning, we give you thanks. For those who are ill and struggling this morning, we pray your mercy and your healing. Lord, today we know that we are all experiencing a different pattern in life. There's been a lot of changes, and we are, we are dealing with that in various ways. But you know us so well, oh God. For each and every person who is praying with us right now, you know their hurts. You know their concerns. You know the desires of their heart. You know our joys. You know our blessings. And Lord, we pray that today you might each meet each and every person where they are and use this time to draw all of us closer to you. Help us this day to, to really think about what it means to have the mind of Christ, to allow our mind to be like your mind, oh God. For our thoughts, the things that go through our mind, they affect us. They affect the decisions we make, the actions we take. Lord, we confess to you our sins and our shortcomings. We confess to you those thoughts that are impure, that are not kind, that are not loving. Lord, we confess that we have failed you in some way. And we stand in need of your forgiveness. And we are so thankful that you offer your son, Jesus Christ. And through him and through your grace, we might find forgiveness. And as we are forgiven people, Help us to be willing to extend that forgiveness to others. Lord, today you know all of those that we have lifted aloud from our prayer list. You know those unspoken concerns. It's so much of God, but it gives us peace knowing that you can handle it all. Lord, you are in control. Help us to trust that. Help us each day to lean on you for strength and for guidance. 
And Lord, take and use our service today. Use the words we sing and the words that are spoken and even the moments of silence. Use it all and draw us close to you. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for your patience and your mercy and your grace. And we lift up this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Our next hymn is How Great Thou Art. I know this is a favorite of so many of you out there, so I know you'll be singing along with me.
now art. Before we get to our scripture this morning, I do want to take a moment just to say thank you to all of you who are continuing to faithfully give to the church through your tithes and your offerings. I sure do not want to focus on that. I know that we're in, each of you may be in a different financial um, state right now, but to those of you who are able to give, know that we thank you. Also to those of you who are continuing with your Lenten calendar and continuing your Lenten offering for UMCOR, thank you for that. I mean, especially with all that is going on, the United Methodist Committee on Relief continues to need our support as well. So just want to say a word of thank you and know that we do appreciate those of you who are able to continue to give and um, hope that you will you will do so as you are able and as, as the Lord leads. But this morning, our scripture comes from Philippians chapter 2. <laughs> At least I have to have my folks here do it so I can, I can feel a little bit. Um, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Shared last week that I was feeling led to, to, to preach from Philippians, at least at least for now, uh, each week, but always open to, to God's leading. But Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, um, I pray that this will be a good word for you as it's been for me to meditate on this week. Let us all listen for a word from the Lord. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. So how is it with your mind this morning? How is it with your mind? For most of us, we are wrapping up a couple of weeks of this social distancing thing. For some of you, it's been a little bit longer than that. And I would imagine that for many of you, your mind has been spinning. And for some of you, your mind may have hit boredom. The extroverts and the huggers, I know, y'all are struggling. Many parents have taken on this added role of being homeschool teachers. And I'm, I'm hearing mixed thoughts on that. It's a lot. Everybody seems to be thinking about what they are going to eat next. Oh my goodness, how much do we talk about food? We are bombarded daily with thoughts and opinions on COVID-19 and we see the numbers rise. Our minds are working overtime trying to sort out what we should believe and what we shouldn't believe. Some of us are worried about our own health. Some of us are worried about the health of loved ones. Then there's the financial stuff. Some have lost jobs, some have had hours cut, some are uncertain about the future of their position, and then some are having to work extra and harder and longer. Then there's that other big decision. What am I going to watch next on Netflix or Hulu or TikTok? We're all in different, different places right now, y'all. And then to top all of it, we had storms come through last night. And for some of you, that was a very unwelcome stress and thought process for your mind to consider. What have I forgotten? What has filled your mind and thoughts? And let me ask you again, how is it with your mind right now? In verse five of our scripture this morning, Paul writes, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And throughout the New Testament, we find it emphasized that the mind plays a significant role in us living as followers of Jesus and being disciples. 
Romans 12, verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. If you know it, say it with me. By the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, salvation includes not only giving our hearts to Jesus, but also giving our minds to him. God desires to renew our minds. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 puts it this way. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lust, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourselves with a new self, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Simply put again, y'all, it's not only about inviting Jesus into our hearts, but it's about inviting Jesus into our minds. And seeking to have the mind of Christ. Think about when Jesus gives the great command with commandment, which actually originates in the Old Testament. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Say it with me, with all your mind and with all your strength. In other words, with everything. Paul will actually circle back to this, this role of the mind when he gets towards the end of this letter to the Philippians in the beautiful words of Philippians 4, 8, he will write, finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellent and, is it, and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. These are important words for us. And it's important for us to take an honest look at how it is with our minds as well as how it is with our hearts and our souls this day. Now let's recall something for a moment. If you were with us last week in worship, maybe you were not. You might want to go back and listen to that sermon to get a little more background on Philippians. But, but let's recall, where is Paul when he writes Philippians? Do you know? He's in jail. He's in jail. So how does Paul handle his time in jail? Is he focusing on his own circumstances? No. Is he sitting around just waiting, counting down the days till he gets out? No. Is he getting mad at God and blaming him and questioning him about why he's having to suffer? No. Paul's not feeling sorry for himself. Paul's not even focusing on himself. How does he survive and get by his time in jail? He's focusing on Jesus and he's focusing on others. And the way he's focusing on others is by trying his best to encourage them to focus on Jesus. Have you ever called somebody to check on them? Maybe they were sick and you wanted to call and see how they were doing and you had a whole conversation and when you get off the phone you realize, oh my goodness, that whole time they were asking about me. They were wondering how I was doing, if I was feeling good, what I, what, what I was up to. And all of a sudden you realize that, that the person you called to check on was more concerned with you, and you, you, you realize that this person cared so much about you, and they wanted to focus on your situation and not their situation. You see, Paul he doesn't want to focus so much on his situation. He wants to focus on the situation of the Philippians, and on the situation of others. He's already said a little earlier in this letter that whatever happens to him, he'll be all right. If he survives, if he gets out of jail, he'll be able to go back and see the Philippians again. But if he should die, because let's just face it, if you were in a Roman jail at any point in time, if they had a reason to execute you or even if they wanted to make up a reason, it wouldn't have been um, a, a, rare, a rare thought. I mean, he knew the, the potential, the possibility was very real. He might die there in that jail. But he said, you know what? If that happens, I'll be all right because I'll get to see Christ. You see, Paul is trying his best to express to the Philippians what it looks like to follow Jesus as a community of faith, not just as an individual, but as a group. As they themselves are facing trials and persecutions, they need the encouragement to follow even when the going gets tough. To understand what it looks like to follow Jesus, they must look to Jesus. And to understand, they must begin to rethink how they view the world and how they allow their minds to to be like that of Christ. So i got a question for you. 
How many of you think your mind is even close to the mind of Christ? Any hands raised around the sanctuary today? How many of you think your mind is even close to the mind of thoughts? Think about the things you think about. Oh, yes. You. Think about what you think about. You see Jesus thinking about those things? Think about how you view others. Uh-oh, preacher, you might be thinking. Do you see Jesus viewing others that way? One of the things that Paul feels is important to highlight about Jesus is his humility. Jesus did not elevate himself. He came down to our level. And if the Son of God refused to elevate himself, then why would anyone else dare to elevate himself or herself above others? Jesus came down to earth to be level with you and me. There's a quote that we've talked about sometime in the past during mission trip trainings. And it's a quote that says, you will never minister effectively to anyone you think less of. Hear that again. You will never minister effectively to anyone you think less of. In striving to have the mind of Christ, it's essential that we don't raise ourselves above others. In considering what it means to have the mind of Christ, we also need to consider verses 3 and 4 that lead up to this, to this particular verse. It says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. So maybe we know we ought to have the same mind as Christ, the, the Christ mind, but how do we do that? How do we do that when most of us feel like we're not even close? Keep in mind to begin with that actions and attitude go hand in hand. The late Dr. Maurice Boyd said, we can think ourselves into a new way of acting, or we can act ourselves into a new way of thinking. Either way, they go together. If your mindset is that of Christ, your actions will be that of Christ. And the more your actions are that of Christ, the more your mind becomes that of Christ. I encourage you to begin to hold yourself accountable. If you are really serious about it, if you say, you know what, I need to work on my mind. I need to work on my thoughts. I need to work on how I view others. If you're really serious about it, ask a friend or a family member to hold you accountable. Say, hey, catch me. Catch me if I look down on somebody else. Let me know if I say something ugly or negative. We're all guilty. Or I should say we all. Most of us are guilty at some time of looking down at others based on how they might look or how they might live or maybe something you heard they did in their past. We need to pray to see others as Christ sees them. If people are, are following the wrong path in life, we're not called to point fingers at them and talk about them. We're called to minister to them and point them to Jesus. Say, come and join me. I've got a ways to go. Let's, let's go together. Remember that quote? You can never minister effectively to anyone you think less of. But let me also mention this morning that this applies to you. Catch yourself when you talk negatively about yourself. Some of you put yourself down far more often than you put anybody else down. Some of you fill your mind with negative self-talk talk all day long. Remember, you're a child of God too. God doesn't want you talking bad about yourself and viewing yourself in a negative light. He doesn't want you criticizing yourself and putting yourself down. Pray, strive to see yourself like Christ sees you. And another way that we might seek to have the mind of Christ is to give of ourselves each and every day. I'd encourage you at the end of each day or maybe the beginning of a new day. Some of you are morning people, some of you are night people. But whenever you can reflect best, ask yourself this question. How did I make the life of someone else better today? Or if you wake up in the morning, maybe, how did I make the life of someone else better yesterday? How did I give them my time 
of my money, of my energy, to build somebody else up. Here's where I get encouraged. I think that right now, there's a lot of you who are growing in this area. There are so many of you who are trying to encourage others, and you have a desire to help others right now. Remember that every time you choose to do something out of love for another person, your mind is changing to be more like Christ. Folks, we don't jump from adding 2 plus 2 to being able to solve complex linear equations. Although those are very fun. And if you think otherwise, you've got a problem. Complex linear equations are the way to go. My mind is good this morning. And some of you are, are thinking, oh, what are you even talking about? But we don't, we don't go from simple math to complex. We don't go from, from anything in the simplest form to complex. So, so we don't go from having a mind that is hardly like Christ at all to all of a sudden having Christ-like mindedness. It happens one step at a time. One choice at a time. One action at a time. One decision at a time. At a time. But honestly, y'all, I have been so encouraged these past few days because I'm seeing people take these verses and live them out. And it really does tra transform the world around you. I, I know yesterday I had a voicemail from somebody in our church. I, 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 a part of me wants to say names, part of me doesn't. So I'm just going to stick with it. I'm not saying the names. You know who you are. And I know you, none of you are doing things for your own, own benefit anyway. Somebody called and left me a voicemail and said, hey, I got the new director and I've already called about 18 people to check on. I was like, how encouraging is that? We have kids for Christ teachers and new, new leaders leading studies via Zoom that are willing to learn this technology so they can connect with our church and help keep our, our, our whole church family connected. Various leaders have stepped up and said, yeah, I can help with that. We have many people who are taking time on Mondays and Thursdays to set aside 30 minutes for prayer. I wonder how often on a typical Monday or Thursday we set aside 30 minutes for prayer, but we're doing that through our prayer and connect times. We have people who are volunteering to go shopping for other people. I've heard of many in our community shopping for others and, and going out and running errands. People are praying for each other. Oh my goodness, I've talked to so many people to check on them. They say, we're praying for you. And all I can say is thank you. People are praying. I heard of another church member who took cupcakes to the nursing home yesterday where her mother was. How, how awesome is that? People are sending cards. People are continuing to give. We've had people be very generous to the church, and I see the Christ mind in action through all of this. Healthcare workers are, are literally risking their own lives for the lives of their brothers and sisters. Emergency response folks, I mean, other people, the trucking industry, people that are saying, you know what, I'm going to care more about the needs of others than myself. Yesterday I went and picked up um, some, some of the casseroles from our friends at Heinz Chapel. And I said, hey, do y'all have, have any extra? And they said, you know what? We're actually telling people we're sold out because we want to be able to donate our extra casseroles and they, to, 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 to an organization. And I don't want to put all that out there in case it's not all finalized. But I was like, how awesome is that? That, that heart that wants to give and to serve. So shout out to you, Heinz Chapel United Methodist Women. We have people who are making masks. I know some of our crafty sewing people are making masks. There's so much that's going on that's encouraging and folks, we can't think that that's us. Because that's not us. That is God alive and at work in us. Everything we do that is good is a result of God's grace at work in me and in you. And especially you. So I want to tell you thank you. Because you have encouraged me. And I wonder, what has encouraged you this last week? If you're watching on Facebook Live, share that. Type that. What has encouraged you? All of us love encouragement. Well, I never can say all. Most of us love encouragement. And so what's encouraged you? Share the good stuff. And then also ask that question. Well, how can, how can I encourage someone this upcoming week? How did Paul start out this section of the letter? By saying, if there be any encouragement in Christ... There is encouragement to find in Christ. It may be hard to find encouragement in the news. It may be hard to find encouragement listening to politicians. It may be hard to find encouragement following social media. Which is why you're going to need to turn those things off at times. 
And you're going to need to allow Christ to have room and space in your life and in your mind. And if you're feeling down right now, if you say you're just feeling kind of blah and you're just having a hard time being encouraged, I want you to reach out to the person that you know that you feel is closest to Jesus. I want you to reach out to them and just say, hey, I'm feeling down. How can you encourage me? What words do you have for me? Because I can almost guarantee you that if that person is close to Jesus, they're going to know how to, to speak into your life, to, to be a prayer for you, and to encourage you. Not because they're going to point you to anything about them, but because they're going to point you towards Jesus. There are so many opportunities all around us right now. It makes me think of the scripture where Jesus says, The harvest is plentiful. But the workers are few. However, I look around, and, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm being overly optimistic. That's okay. Because I, I think that I think that seeing the good in the world is what we're, we should be doing. But I look around, and I, I can't help but think the number of workers is growing. I think for some of you worshiping with us right now, I think for some of you right now, you are taking your faith more seriously than you ever have at any point in your life. For some of you, this has been a time of spiritual renewal. So many of you have a heart's desire to do something that will help someone else. So just make sure that whatever you do, you do it all for the glory of God. I love this quote I found in one of my commentaries. It says, this is the Christ mind. Not to grasp at glory, but to live, to love, to die. An emptied self. Prior to sharing his commentary on verses 5 through 11 of the passage this morning, professor, theologian, author N.T. Wright suggests that we should perhaps pause before reading these words about the mind of Christ. And he writes, reading these verses always makes me sorry. The church has so often gotten it wrong. How I wonder. Can we move beyond frustration and penitence and towards getting it right in the future? We want to get it right going forward. We want to live as people that, that when folks see us, they, they realize, man, not only do they act different, they think different. What's that happened into them? We can say, Jesus. Jesus has gotten into us. See, in just a moment, we're going to sing a, a, a praise song that has really a, a simple, simple chorus. It says, we fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. For many of us, I confess, I fall into this category at times, probably more often than I really even want to admit. For many of us, it's time to take off our crowns. It's time to remember that we were never called to be the Lord of our lives. And we were never called to be the Lord of our, anybody's life and our family or and our friends. You and I are not in control. We're not the ones that are supposed to be lords and kings. No, we're to be people who at the name of Jesus bow our knees and confess with our mouths and with our lives and with our minds that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let the same mind be in you. Let the same mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus. Perhaps, perhaps we should all pause and truly reflect on these words the Philippians needed to hear then. And I believe we need to hear today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Him of response this morning is we fall down.
We do thank you for being with us this morning for worship. And as we think about our next steps going forward, I would encourage you, take some time each day. Read through Philippians 2, 1 through 11. Take a moment of silence. Let those words sink in. Allow the Lord to speak into your heart and into your mind this week. Second thing I'd encourage you to do is each day, find a way to encourage someone else. There's plenty of opportunities. And each time you do something out of love for your neighbor, your mind is growing more like the mind of Christ. Again, so good to have you with us. We look forward to the day when we're able to be together once again here in the sanctuary. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to contact me. We're in and out of the church office. We don't necessarily have regular, reg regular hours right now, but we're here most days. You can call or email or call me on my personal um, email or cell or respond to this page. We're praying for you. Let's continue to pray for one another. Pray for your church. Hope that you are well. Hope that you have a fantastic week. God bless you. Alicia's going to come now and lead us in our choral benediction. Let us sing together. Created me a clean heart. Right, Alicia? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.